Hello and welcome everyone to the Ubuntu Development Hangout. Um, today I'm joined by Thomas Voss and Kevin Gunn is going to show up any second. Um, for those of you who joined in through ubuntuonair.com, please make sure that you use the, the chat widget below the video um, because that's, that's where you just uh, assign yourself a nickname, uh, you hit the connect button and then you can ask all the questions you might have. And as so we're talking about Mir and Unity Next, the next generation of Ubuntu, I'm sure there's going to be quite a bunch of questions. So um, if you ask questions, please make sure you prefix them with question in capital letters. I'm also going to let everyone know on, on IRC as well, uh, because that's going to make it easier for me to pick up the questions. I'm just going to ping Kevin again, just to make sure he didn't pick the wrong hangout. How are you doing? How's life over there? Yeah, pretty good. Um, finally, some sort of spring in Germany. A lot of work, um, but that's that's fine with me. So <laughs> I'm good. Really, you must live in a in a very different part in Germany from where I live, because it was still freezing here. Yeah, it's it's freezing, but we have sun. You know, the sky is blue, not gray. We only have one season in in Germany nowadays, so it's always winterish. Yeah, that's right. This has been dragging on for much too long. Yeah. All right, I'll just let everyone know on ISC as well. Um, what is the channel to join, Daniel? Uh, it's Ubuntu dash on dash air on Freenode, but I'm happy to forward questions. Okay, cool. I will just join there. Here we go. Yeah, maybe maybe we should we just start already because we have quite a bunch of viewers already, which is great. Oh, maybe cool. you could just um, introduce yourself. Uh, just say what what you uh, how how you got involved. Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, my name is Thomas Voss. Um, today I'm 32 years old. Um, is it your birthday used... today? Sorry. Is no. it your birthday today? No. Oh, I'm glad. <laughs> Just got around singing a song for you. No, no. Lucky. No. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm lucky. <laughs> no, um, seriously. Um, so, yeah, uh, I joined Canonical uh, at the end of 2011, first in the QA team. Um, and I started working with, uh, with the Utouch guys or Open Input Framework guys uh, back at that time. Um, so, yeah, I did a lot of uh, testing work there, a lot of ground work, making sure that that our over, overall gesture recognition stack is, is testable, portable, and yeah, testable in isolation, essentially. I integrated it partly with um, with Unity for, for window management gestures. Um, and then around, I think, May, May-ish last year, um, we started discussing the, the overall you want to touch project. So basically saying, hey, we want to we want to come up with a film. We want to, to power the next generation of of mobile devices. And in addition to that, um, <clears throat> we want to we want to define this convergence story, which basically says um, Ubuntu is able to power um, mobile devices as well as supercomputers and everything in between, so desktops, laptops, whatever. Um, and the overall user experience that we want to deliver there should, should satisfy you know, two requirements, essentially. First of all, it should, um, it should communicate the Unity design language, um, which most people, I guess, know now. And second, it should um, dynamically scale and adapt to the different four factors. So this, this big vision of having, having a phone, plugging it to a different station, and Basically, your phone your phone becomes your desktop computer. You you go home from work, you take your your mobile device with you, you plug it to your TV, and your your phone or your your computing device in general becomes your TV. And everything is Unity. Everything is the user experience uh, uh, we love. We want to deliver uh, this this beautiful content centric user experience that, that mm -hmm. Unity is nowadays. Yeah. So. Um, 
And after having, having set those goals, we, we started evaluating our different possibilities, how to, how to get this done, essentially. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we identified the graphic stack as one of the one of the major components or one of the major constants of this uh, of this adventure task. And yeah, we we evaluated quite quite a few alternatives there. So obviously, including including Roland slash Western, its its testbed or reference implementation. We uh, evaluated Surface Finger, obviously, and um, we even used it. Um, but in the end, it came down to, um, yeah, we we feel confident and we are convinced that we should do our own display server, and um, that basically resulted in the mere effort or in the mere mm -hmm. project that started around May, June -ish last year. So I first served as the engine engineering manager for that um, particular project. Uh, before I jump over to the general technical architect role for, for the client side development of Ubuntu. That's me. Great, great. Cool. Yeah, you started answering a lot of other questions I had. <laughs> I think so, yeah. So then, <laughs> it was yeah, a good it's introduction. It's quite inter intertwingled, so uh, bear with me. No, that's, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Hello, Kevin. Hey. Hey, Kevin. How are you doing? Good, how are you guys? Good, good. Um, yeah, just ask the, Thomas to, to introduce himself, uh, what, what he, what, which role he has uh, in, in the project. Maybe you can, can do the same? Sure. So, Kevin Gunn. Um, I've been with Canonical all of, I guess, two, two months now. Um, mm -hmm. Started in February. Um, so, uh, my, my background is in mobile software. I've worked for um, uh, mobile Mobile OEM as well as a, a semiconductor provider, um, doing software the entire time, and my experience revolves around uh, kind of multimedia graphics. Uh, mm -hmm. So along the same lines, in the same vein as as maybe the topic of Mir. Okay, and and you now um, what's the, what's what's your role in the in the project now? Right. So as Thomas was just mentioning, right, he was mm -hmm. managing the Mir team. Mm -hmm. Uh, for the Mir project, and then when I came on board, we we've actually kind of I guess we've reorganized a little bit. I guess I'm 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 a little lost on the historical aspect of it, but we've taken the Unity team and split it into kind of two pieces, where there's the uh, Unity APIs uh, that that provide all the services and the backend functionality, and then we have the the UI team, the people who are providing all the visual components and handling input and that sort of thing. And then, um, obviously, there's the Mirror team, which is kind of separate. But my ownership, as far as engineering management, is over both the Unity UI team and the Mirror team. And the thinking there was, obviously, since uh, people are you know, putting stuff on the screen, it would make sense to kind of have those two teams sort of managed by the same person and uh, create sort of a good uh, fellowship between those teams. <coughs> Um, yeah, that's that's interesting. You, I guess, you spend a lot of time in 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 meetings and and staying on top of blueprints. Sorry, um, I guess you spend a lot of time in in meetings and and uh, staying on top of blueprints. Yes, um, yeah, that's that's probably what I've been doing the most of. I guess about the time I came on board, right? It was like Thomas said, there was a decision taken to go ahead and make Mir a full blown project, and as part of that, I think we needed to just get organized. And so a large part of what I've been doing is to just help the team, um, you know, write down what needs to happen, right? What tasks need to happen in order to fulfill the dream and make it happen. So, uh, yeah, you'll see a lot of what we discuss and what's been planned reflected in those blueprints. Cool. And maybe maybe we can talk a bit about um, what what this means for for Ubuntu, like uh, Mirror and, and Unity Next is going to be quite a bit of work. Um, how is this going to, to, to change about to which opportunities is this, is this going to bring? Sorry, Daniel, you, you broke up on me. I think it's my, my connection. Like oh, one. sorry. No, I, I said um, Mill and Unity's Next is quite an undertaking. It's quite an effort. Um, maybe it would be good to talk about what this, what this is going to bring for Ubuntu. Like, which, which opportunities? 
Right. So, so I caught the last end of that. So, in general, you know, what what is this going to do? Right. What are we? How are we going to bring this into being? And what's this going to do for Ubuntu? Um, obviously, there's been a, I guess, a, a large focus and shift with the recent um, touch preview that everyone hopefully is familiar with. They've probably seen it, um, you know, either live at Mobile World Congress or maybe on uh, YouTube videos. Um, some of the uh, you know, I hesitate to use the word demonstration, but but that's what it is, a demonstration of actual product software that's under development on real hardware. Um, that focus is, is really being carried through to our development efforts right now. So the way we view the world, I guess, is that a lot of the requirements and um, features that we're delivering are really a subset for um, desktop in terms of what we're doing with mobile and tablet, right? So at some point, I think we, we all see those form factors converging. You know, really, the difference is only physical screen size, maybe the input device, that sort of thing. And so we believe that what we're doing now will actually feed all those form factors and enable us to actually have truly one code base to rule them all, right? One code base that's actually fulfilling all of the user requirements and feature requirements for both, um, I should say, all uh, form factors. That's TV, tablet, uh, desktop. Um, what did I lose? Phone. phone. Yeah, phone, TV, tablet, desktop. Right. Super so th computer. those four. <laughs> um, <laughs> so those those four form factors, we can actually satisfy all of those with one code base. That's awesome. Uh, Thomas, do you want to, to add anything? I don't think so. I guess it was a good summary. Um, I guess from my perspective, the most important aspect is yeah, convergence in terms of code bases. And uh, I'm talking about trajectory, like uh, what, what, how Kevin put it, like one, one code base to rule them all, one user interface, or one consistent user interface for users. Um, that is, um, People who know how to use Ubuntu on a desktop are immediately familiar with their phone. Um, and same for the TV, and it just scales up and down. That's that's my my big vision of the of the overall system. Yeah, another common phrase we use, right, is seamless user experience. So that if you're on one device and you and you experience Ubuntu on another, you should have enough familiarity to navigate what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. um, so talking about Unity. I think the, the aspect that that I like or that that kind of shines for me and, and especially with Unity Next and um, and near underneath, it's um, it's this idea of a uh, of a very lean and very integrated feel of the system. So not like like having like having a feel of, of a disrupted landscape of we assemble things together. That's a valid use case as well, and I do not want to question that. But I'm I'm envisioning the, I, I call it the, the ordinary or nine to five user, where where you have uh, where we deliver something out of the box that is just beautiful and immediately usable, and and yet yeah, useful to users. I guess that's that's kind of the notion that that uh, summarizes our goal for me. And, and that sounds brilliant. I think everybody is, is like me, and I can't can't wait to to see this happening. Um, I I haven't tried Mill or Unity next yet. I've I've, saw, I've seen some some videos. Maybe you can talk a bit about what the state of things is right now. Okay. Um, Kevin, do you want me to quickly summarize what we have so far? Sure. And um, you can you can just add add uh, details wherever appropriate. So. Uh, Mir in its current state is uh, um, is not running on the Ubuntu Touch preview. I think that's one of the most uh, prominent questions that we that we uh, get from people. Um, we could put it under there, but the shell wouldn't be integrated with the uh, um, with the overall uh, display stack or display server as we want it to. Be. Um, so we pushed out that goal a little further. Um, that being said, Mir is able to run on um, the free driver stack on the desktop, so the GBM, DRM, KMS 
combination, um, Mir can leverage that driver model and can run on the desktop as a very simple um, system level compositor, which basically means no, no, funky, no funky stuff there, um, just compositor. Um, so I guess a lot of people have seen the um, Unity on XME videos on YouTube that I posted some, some while back, and that's basically Unity running as always on X, but X is talking to Mir for, for compositing or for rendering. Um, so we integrated or we, we wired up the, the open source Intel and Gradient drivers for that. So Chris mm -hmm. House Rogers did that. And um, that's pretty much functioning right now. Um, we didn't land it in 1304 because it's not, it's essentially not, uh, not the overall idea of how we want to, to integrate things. So for us, Unity, Next, and Mir are tightly integrated. And we, we more or less now think about the system level and the session level shell. Um, so that's kind of the state of Mir um, on the free driver stack. It's running on Android as well. Um, it is able to leverage the existing Android drivers, um, existing binary blobs from, from SOCs. And uh, yeah, we are leveraging the hybrids to pull it over the libc boundary, so Bionic versus libc as on, on Ubuntu. Um, right now, its compositing uh, engine is based on, on GLES 2, um, with a lot of work now landing on, on Trunk that basically enables me to leverage the hardware compositing features of modern mobile phones or modern mobile GPUs. Um, that's a huge leap forward. So GLES 2 compositing is always, always has to be the fallback, but on the server side, um, ideally you should make use of the hardware compositor, which basically makes sure that you are render or compositing as fast as possible. And second, um, you are saving as much power as possible. So that's obviously one of the, the most important goals on, on mobile platforms. Brilliant. Um, yeah, for Unity Next, um, I guess huge portions of it are, have already been seen in the Ubuntu Touch preview. So mm -hmm. it will all be Qt PML based, um, tightly integrated with Mir. So um, the Ubuntu Touch preview is kind of to a certain degree, not completely, um, a preview of Unity Next on mobile devices. Okay. And um, if I was to try that out on my, on my laptop, on my desktop, I, is, is there some, some PPA, some instructions for the very, very curious? Um, Kevin, I guess, uh, uh, if I'm wrong, but um, the, the wiki pages on Ubuntu, wiki.ubuntu.com slash mir are up to date. Um, yeah. So um, it's still a bit clunky to, to install mir, obviously, and we are working towards, uh, yeah, shipping the out-of-the-box out of experience that we, that we actually have in mind. But, um, yeah, stay tuned. And yeah, uh, and the, yeah, I guess, sorry. Daniel, the, the same goes for uh, Unity Next as well. So we have um, mm -hmm. a page up for that as well. I think it's uh, unity.ubuntu.com um, slash uh, getting involved, I think, mm -hmm. for Unity Next. And um, did, did you have a, a timeline already when you want to get this into uh, Ubuntu or when this will be a bit more usable, just so people have a rough idea of... of right. That? So we actually we started kind of our own internal straw man proposal discussion mm -hmm. this week. Um, mm -hmm. I, think of, I think most people feel comfortable saying that, you know, s soon after we do some form of uh, Unity Next and Mirror integration. When we actually have Unity Next running on top of Mirror, I think we want to immediately try to make that available at least as a um, at least as a session on the desktop, right? So it may not, it certainly won't come as default, but we, we may make it available so that people can experience it. It will be, you know, whatever the state of feature development is at that moment, right? I mean, obviously, it will be a preview for, for some period of time to come. And we view that since we are focusing on the phone and on the tablet um, in terms of our feature development, uh, we're thinking, you know, around October time frame that we would have something really stable. But again, it would be a, a, 
a feature subset matching that of the phone and the tablet. That sounds, sounds great. Um, and we have some questions from the audience uh, already, and I uh, like to remind everyone, if you ask questions, please prefix them with question in capital letters so I can easily pick them up. The first one is by Kostic. I hope I uh, pronounce it correctly. What graphical toolkit should I consider using for the Unity Next? Is it safe to stick with GTK3, or should I need to consider switching to Qt5? Qt5 doesn't play so nice with Python and Golang currently. Haven't tried C yet. I, I would um, I would say at least you know if if you're going to if you're starting from scratch right that that I would encourage uh, using Qt. I don't know Thomas is. I think it, it depends on um, on what people want to achieve for, for application developers. Um, I think the toolkit doesn't matter that much. So obviously we will uh, we will wire up GTK three to to near and Unity Next as well. However, um, we are uh, we are relying on Qt to to deliver our SDK experience to users. So it's our primary SDK that we push out there. Um, with web apps, I, I guess people know that with web apps being being another part of that ecosystem. Um, so basically, HTML5 and JavaScript. So yeah, as Kevin put put or 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 stated, it Qt5 for if you start over or QML especially is a great idea. It's a great toolkit and it's, a, it's very efficient to develop with that. But GTK3 um, is not a problem as well if you have a lot of code. So stay tuned for us wiring up, um, or for two kids being wired up to the general. Perfect. So I, I think what we're recommending right now for um, app developers who want to, to write something for, for Ubuntu Touch, I can just briefly show it to you. Um, there's this page. It's, um, it's the uh, development guide for, for, uh, for app developers, and it's really, really easy to to write an yeah. uh, initial prototype and get it on, onto a touch device if, if you have one of them. So that's on developer.ubuntu.com. So you can yeah, just, just on a personal level, I mean, going through that is extremely useful. If you're, you know, I, I was not a, you know, someone who was very familiar with Qt or QML, so it's it was an extremely useful exercise and very short. And there's there's actually quite a bit of Data out there on the web and videos and that sort of thing by uh, Indigia and the people who are behind Qt and you know how to how to use it and how to use it efficiently. So it's very good stuff. Perfect. And there's another uh, question by Ben Kaiser. He asked, uh, "Will Compass run the same on Mir SX?" Oh well, I guess Compass is a thing of the past with Mir. Um, Compass um, ju will just power the, the legacy world, let's say. So we, 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 Mir is a compositor, and um, we, we don't need one anymore. No separate one like Compass. OK. And you, you mentioned um, a getting in, in involved page earlier. How easy is it to, to, to get involved? What, what are you? looking for well, how how can people get in in touch with the teams so i would i would say this that you know instructions for downloading and running software or building software um, that sort of thing are mainly found on the getting involved pages if you want to know you know what's actually in terms of you know assignment and what people are doing and that sort of thing you can go look at the um, blueprints which uh, <laughs> as part of just making the tool work correctly um, are not directly associated with the project but they're associated with the parent project of Ubuntu and almost all the blueprints that I've created to kind of capture the work that we're doing start with um, client-1303 because uh, that's that's about the time frame when we put these things together dash and then it'll either be unity UI or mirror and then mm -hmm dash some other subtopic, right? So there's there's tons of um, 
subtopics and dependencies between the blueprints, how they feed each other. But uh, you know, I recommend you could look at uh, uh, client dash thirteen o three dash unity dash ui dash um, iteration dash zero as being kind of the main one that we're focused on right now with Unity. Mm -hmm. And then likewise, it's it's almost the same exact blueprint moniker. It's client 1303 mirror phone iteration zero with a dash in between all those words. Um, and, and if you take a look at that, you'll you'll see a diagram in the middle of each blueprint page also, you know, how they're connected to other blueprints. So you can easily click on that diagram and navigate to another blueprint to see the details. Perfect. But we're. People, yeah. I would. I was just going to say, Daniel, we're very active in those, and those are being updated. Mm -hmm. Maybe not daily, but a few times a week, people are saying, "Hey, I'm working on this. I'm done with this. It's in progress, or whatever." Perfect. And if people get stuck or don't know where to start, they can um, just find you on ISC on awesome mailing list. Yes. Yes. So for uh, for IRC on Freenode, we're on. Uh, Hash. Um, I always have to look. <laughs> Ubuntu dash Unity and Ubuntu dash Mirror are the two that um, our teams are hanging out in the most. Okay. I think those That's, pointers yeah. are on the wiki pages as well. So yeah. Perfect. Perfect. And I assume you you also have a few small bugs that maybe somebody who's a bit newer to the code base could can, can fix as well. Absolutely. So um, there are, um, you know, there are bugs actually kind of piling up on on uh, Mir right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, mm -hmm. if anyone's interested, they can go there and look. Um, with uh, with Unity, um, you know, this is this is maybe an admittance that we're dealing with a little bit of of legacy. You know, it's kind of an ocean of of bugs out there. Um, I would say the other the other thing you could do is is look through um, you know fix me's or to dos in the code. Um, they're they're not all equal in size, but some of them are low hanging fruit cool. um, that that can easily be addressed. Perfect. Okay, uh, there are more questions coming in. Uh, Bavesh asks: So as Compass will be legacy, will we be able to get Compass effects like Desktop Cube, Wobbly Windows in Unity Next? That's, that's a very oh, good question. I, I, was I actually like. I was expecting this much much earlier, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I think there already is one um, before that question, but um, I think it's lost in the backlog. Um, so um, I love Wobbly Windows. Um, however, um, I think uh, the focus of Unity Next is delivering the Unity user experience, whereas for Compass, Compass was a pluggable system that allowed all sorts of effects. Um, so with that being said, I think the focus is delivering a very clean and, and efficient uh, uh, user experience. So while it would be possible in theory, um, it's not in our plans yet. Okay. Yeah, I just, I just spotted the other question. It was asked earlier already. <laughs> All right, next one. Uh, Hakan's line asks, you think the effect of introducing mouse to the top right as GNOME without Ubuntu tweak? I think no. I would need some clarification there. Mm -hmm. So the uh, uh, Hackenstein, are you talking about um, hot corners? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we might have a bit of lag. So I don't know, mouse to the top could that be? Auto raise or something? I don't know. I don't. So I'm not using GNOME shell nowadays, so um, I'm a bit lost here. Yeah. Okay. Maybe just clarify the question and ask it again. And we'll move on to the next one. Yeah. Um, Kurasa asks when Mill and Unity Next will be released? Kevin, did you get that question? When will Mirror and Unity be released? Yeah. Um, I guess it's sort of a loaded question, right? So they're, they're both available today, right? You can uh, you can you can access both code bases today, as as we were discussing on the Get Involved pages. So you can you can actually get access to that code. You can participate in um, you know bug fixing or making changes, um, that sort of thing. The the uh, Launchpad pages are open. 
Um, in terms of, you know, I think the right question or maybe what you mean is when are we going to integrate it into a release uh, together? Um, we are targeting, um, you know, sometime after April having Unity Next integrated on top of Mirror. So where Unity Next will be operating as a shell actually using Mirror as its uh, window compositor um, and having all the, um, you know, event handling piping and everything hooked up. Um, after that, then we will we will at least have PPAs available where people can download and, and play with this and look at it. Um, you know, it's it'll, it'll at least in my mind it will be very similar to how it is right now, and then we 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 will evolve that into an optional session on the desktop, and then over a very long course of time, we view that we will eventually converge that into. You know that will be that will become the default uh, operation of the system, and that's kind of targeted out in 2014 sometime okay. when when we achieve full convergence. Mm -hmm. All right, here's a question by N. Shield. If you're not a hotshot C developer, can you still help? And if so, how? Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, you know, being a hotshot C developer, you know, that that. Be, knowing C++ would help a lot if you're going to dig around in Mir. Um, it, it is it is very um, you know I think I think Thomas and I are both kind of admittedly C++ fanboys, as we like to call ourselves. So um, Mir has done very well in C++. And it's got great you know uh, design and abstractions and that sort of thing. But on the Unity Next side, everything is done in QML. Or not everything, but almost everything. The majority, I should say, mm -hmm. is done in QML. So you can certainly um, uh, look around in there. And I think you know it. It's uh, you know go through the t tutorials and look at it. Um, you know I recommend write your own application, that sort of thing. Get used to it, and then if you want to come help on QML code, great. And I guess there's always a lot of testing to be done. There's uh, Working on on bug reports or yep. um, maybe some documentation. Thomas, you wanted to add something? You were nodding yeah, your yeah, head. Yeah, yeah. I, I was just about to say. So um, uh, we are considering a, a test-driven development model, and obviously, um, testing something as complex as a display server or as complex as a as a shell on top of a display server is a quite challenging task. So um, we are investing a lot of effort and. Um, yeah, essentially a lot of effort into making sure that everything is, is testable. And the test framework needs to evolve at the same time as the overall system. Obviously, the more complex the system becomes, um, the more capable the, the testing infrastructure has to be. And I think as, as Mir evolves over time and as Unity Next evolves over time, a lot of tasks will pop up in, in, in that part, part of the story or in that part of the systems. Um, one thing that comes to my mind um, would be Cucumber, which is essentially behavior-driven testing. So we, we kind of have that on, on on the agenda, but it's sometime in the future until it happens, where Cucumber basically means um, you are able to to write a test in a um, in a wiki-like syntax or, or mm -hmm. language, and um, then there is some some sort of bridge system that basically translates this abstract test into into something that is executable by the by the shell or uh, by near um, that's one problem we uh, or that's one one aspect where you most likely do not need to be a, a C programmer for example or autopilot so we have a, a whole functional testing suit or uh, integration testing suit that is written in Python that's that's one possibility as well that exists today. And maybe you can explain how this um, testing process, how it works. I'm, I'm interested in, in the automated testing bits. Of, if I was to, you know, write write some code for for Mir or for Unity Next, how would it work? How do I do the testing, and what happens? Oh, um, I guess um, yeah, that's a question that has been asked multiple times now. Um, so not only on this hangout or within this session, but um, over the last few weeks. Um, as I said earlier, it's all test driven, and our internal developers are subject to this uh, to this rigorous uh, engineering process um, as well. So 
let me summarize how it works. So ideally, you start over with writing a test case, so in whatever language. Let's leave that detail aside for the moment. And only if you have written this test and this, this overall acceptance test, let's say, fails, um, you can start implementing, because then you exactly know what you need to do to, to satisfy the, the pre-written test condition. So um, that's essentially how we see development in year and Unity Next. Obviously, um, we are not living in a perfect world and not in a utopian world, so um, uh, we all need to be reasonable. 100% test coverage is not always possible. Um, so there's, there, there are slight trade-offs there, and we, we, they, are, they are subject to, to individual uh, discussions so about, for certain features. But in general, no feature lands or no line of code lands without, an uncom without a test that makes sure that it actually works. And it needs to pass our, our continuous integration and, and auto landing stage, which is um, essentially one of the reasons we are, uh, we are so happy to use Launchpad at this point, because Launchpad basically allows us to take every branch that is merge proposed and execute it on our quite sophisticated testing infrastructure that is living somewhere in the cloud. Um, and that makes sure that all changes to me and Unity Next um, do not break the system and are well integrated. Oh, that's great. Uh, let me see. Cheeseburg asks, I'm not sure this is uh, the right place to ask this question, but work, work is being done to make Unity Next more friendly to those with disabilities. This is one area where uh, OS X is head of the competition. Oh, yes. Um, that's actually a very good point. Um, we are always happy for, for people to help there. Um, we, have, um, we have two or three blueprints up. Um, I, can, I can post them to Mirdevel if uh, uh, I think that would be a good idea, where we uh, try to collect the, the overall discussion of, of accessibility and at the same time, input methods with mm -hmm. so both areas are kind of related, and they are not the same, obviously. But our aim for Mir um, is to um, to allow the shell to to leverage all the all the sophisticated um, accessibility patterns and and technologies that are out there. Um, yeah, and our goal obviously is to make make the situation a lot better than it is nowadays. But to be honest, we, we, are, we kind of need input from, from the people actually relying on the accessibility technologies, and we are always happy to, um, to, to take input there and opinions and kind of saying, hey, guys, you definitely should support this screen reader or this mm -hmm. sort of interaction with the system. So the, the, the best place to get involved in those discussions is the, the mirror devil mailing list? I think so, Kevin. Any, any other opinion? Mm, no. That, that's a start. Perfect. All right, next question. Uh, will Dell asks, will all Ubuntu applications switch to Qt rather than GTK? For example, LibreOffice. I don't think so. Yeah. Um, and first of all, it's, uh, so it's a uh, LibreOffice, for example, is an application that is shipped with Ubuntu, um, but we are not, we are not developing. LibreOffice, obviously, so they are they are free to choose the toolkit they want. Um, there is the core apps effort that is uh, taking place together with the community right now, where a few central system applications are developed with Qt5 or more specifically QML, um, and hopefully this this set of applications uh, grows over time. But in general, no one is forced to switch to Qt5. Okay, that makes sense. Um, another question about wobbly windows and when we can have them. Any any time frame? 2022. <laughs> there should probably be a blueprint for it. Yeah, yeah, we should we should have a blueprint for wobbly windows. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean I, I do think it is important for you know everyone who might be listening here, right? Is um, you know our our immediate goals are to try to satisfy the the phone and the tablet in terms of a complete delivered product, right? So obviously no wobbly windows in terms of those form factors. Um, 
when we get to a converged state, if that becomes a requirement, then we'll address it then. But I, but I agree with Thomas, that's a futuristic element. Uh, agreed, yeah. Okay, uh, another question by Ben Kaiser. Will Mill and Unity Next, like Compass, allow plugins so someone else can implement Wobbly Windows? Um, to be honest, um, uh, we learned a lesson from Compass, and that is um, that the overall, this um, very, very flexible and pluggable architecture has got its drawbacks as well, and uh, we want to avoid um, running into the same situation uh, as with Compass. So it will not be pluggable by default, although um, the renderer and the actual compositing engine uh, are are extensible. Um, yeah, by design essentially, because we we need to uh, we need to have different renderer implementations for different platforms and for testing purposes. So if someone is really really into Wobbly Windows, he or she could look in there, but. Um, Mir and Unity Next are not designed as, as uh, pluggable or plugin based systems. Okay. So we have 20 minutes left and we still have quite a queue of questions. Um, I'm happy to keep going. Or did you have something you, you wanted to talk about? Anything we should make time for? Otherwise, we'll... I'm good. So, Perfect. Kevin, anything from your side? No, nothing. Okay. Oh, fire away. Okay, next question. Harkins line. On GNOME 3, if you go left up the mouse, you can see the whole window as alt tab. I think that's spread. It's essentially Windows or the spread of one desktop or um, the spread across multiple virtual desktops or multiple or multiple uh, physical mm -hmm. monitors. Um, yes, Unity will provide a spread, um, uh, or Unity Next will provide uh, uh, something similar to the spread approach. If it's activated by, by the top left hot corner, I cannot say that's up to design. But um, we will have a similar functionality. Great. Uh, another question by Kostic. Uh, for testing purposes, should I uh, gpart a new partition on the disk to try out MIR, or would a VM be a good solution? Can you repeat that question? I th Sorry. Yeah. Come well, in. I guess he's he's asking, does he need to actually have like a dual boot, you know, an isolated system to test mirror? Um, what are you recommending currently? To prevent anyone from breaking a production setup, better better make sure that you you have a, a dual boot solution, as as we said. So it's not it's not a hundred percent production ready. So um, it it might break your system, although it's unlikely. I, I, I think we shouldn't commit to saying uh, that. Nothing yeah, will break. I, I would say too, in terms of you know, I guess the, the the real question too was, you know, should I dual boot or should I have um, you know virtual box of some sort? I I think you know maybe dual boot gives you a little bit more realistic performance of what you might see in the end. Yeah, you're not, com you're not competing with your host system. That makes makes perfect sense. All right, um, Dell asks. Uh, no, sorry, we had this question already. We answered the one about uh, application switching to Qt. Um, and Shield asks, how much planning has gone into Mir's multi monitor handling? Oh, that's a that's a that's an interesting one actually. Um, so there are two parts to multi monitor handling, and. Um, Multi-monitor handling, first of all, uh, needs to happen on a on a very deep base OS layer, where uh, essentially you need to detect that a new monitor has been has been plugged, unplugged, switched off, switched on, whatever, um, or an external um, an external display device. Let's let's be a, a bit more general here. Um, so that part essentially is present in Mir today. So um, whenever you plug a monitor. Um, uh, Mir gets to know about it and sets up compositing and whatnot internally. Um, we have a cool testing setup for that. Um, so there, we have some hardware in our testing lab where, the, where we can, so with with uh, test fixture, basically connect and disconnect the monitor 
arbitrary rates and whatnot. That's that's kind of there. The um, the bigger portion of the of the overall multi monitor story or external display story is um, is about behavior. For example, um, showing a dialog to to select a configuration like clone, split, um, whatever uh, whatever fun funky layouts uh, you can think about, and that more or less falls into the Unity Next world. Um, that being said, um, a lot of design planning and a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of discussions have gone into, into the overall multi-monitor specification and to, to make it compatible with, with multiple workspaces or virtual workspaces. Um, I think the, the multi-monitor spec is even, even publicly available. Um, Kevin, do you have a link handy? I think there, there was this this very lengthy behavior specification that John Lee, um, put out. Yeah, and kind of concluding the answer. Um, this Unity Next behavior has been spec, but not completely in implemented yet. Um, or I don't even know if we started on implementing it completely. Um, but yeah, um, so the planning stage basic of the specification specification stage has been left, and now the next step would be to put it to execution. The biggest yeah. challenge there, from my perspective, is testing that. So it's so like like testing it manually or on a manual basis that just doesn't scale, um, and we need to come up with a clever way of, of making it testable across a, a wide range of different use cases. One, one thing or one possible approach could be to leverage uh, Martin Pitt's work on um, being able to inject UDEV events. So, for example, mm -hmm. simulating uh, plugging and unplugging of hardware. Um, but I would need to look into it um, if it's if it's there yet. Oh, good idea. Next question. William asks, will Desktop Unity Next follow closer to the design of the current Unity or the Ubuntu phone design? I think the the general trend is it's going to follow more closely the phone design. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Corasa asks, what's the relationship with NVIDIA, ATI, and Intel about Mirror? Why don't collaborate with NVIDIA, ATI, or Intel? Sorry for my English. Corasa, you're doing fine. Is there anything we can... Um, let let people know what's what's going on or what's what's planned. I guess it's fine to say um, that we are working with uh, closely together with GPU vendors. Um, Nvidia is among them. Um, so yes, obviously um, that's of mutual interest. I would say. Um, unfortunately, we cannot share any more details. But as soon as we can, we will and take the discussion to a wider audience or to the public in general. Yeah, I, and I think it's important to, you know, I, I always see these kind of open source um, discussion forums talking about, you know, lack of functionality due to not having access to drivers or something like that. But I think everyone needs to understand we are using just straight Kronos compliant GLES2 for um, functionality support of all composition, right? So no matter what, it should work. So the only thing we're talking about in terms of, um, you know, if we were to ever collaborate with anyone, we would just be getting sort of extra goodness, right? Maybe maybe vendor-specific extensions or vendor-specific hardware or that sort of thing, right? So um, I think everyone needs to understand that we have something that's going to work no matter what, as long as people are supporting GLES2 conformant drivers. And, and the other part is, um, so talking about the server-side driver models, like a way of, so we basically have three main functionalities there, allocating graphics, uh, graphics buffers, or graphics memory, essentially. Um, then we have um, something to bootstrap a server-side EGL slash GLES context. And third is um, um, essentially monitor management or, or physical output device ma uh, management. Um, so on the free driver stack, this is GBM, DRM, and KMS. On Android, it's the uh, equivalence, which is Grelog, um, FD.H, which is part of the hardware abstraction layer of Android, and um, 
here. Uh, let me let me quickly think. It's fb dot h, and I think is it monitor dot h or fb dot h? I cannot completely remember. But in general, these are the the assumptions that <coughs> that Mir makes, and they are very very low. So we do not expect anything fancy to to be provided by the by GPU vendors or SOC uh, vendors. Um, and the point there is, um, if someone um, decides to give us this functionality, um, I think everyone benefits because it's the basic assumption that underlies every system out there. Yeah, so that makes sense. And um, well, it might be frustrating to, to some that there's no clear uh, um, an announcement at, at this stage. I think it's important that. Uh, I mean, it's, it's understandable. People want to know, is this going to work on my hardware? And f for me, it's going to be good enough if, if you both say, we're optimistic. We're looking to the future. It's looking good. That's good enough for me. And I think that's what I, what I just heard. Yeah. Perfect. OK, and another question by C. Kutch. How many things in Mill on Unity Next are hardware accelerated? UI widgets, video playback? Um, so in general, the answer is hopefully everything. Uh, so right now, everything is, is hardware accelerated. If we are talking about video acceleration, um, the discussion becomes a little more difficult because, there, first of all, there's a zoo of um, hardware or, or video acceleration APIs out there. and to be quite frank, we, we started on that topic. However, if we consider the Android model, for example, where um, there's no distinct um, API for um, hardware accelerated video blitting, but basically only a way of hardware accelerated video decoding, and then everything is streamed to, to a texture handle. Um, so this last part is possible with me right now. But if you're asking about the VA, for example, yeah, we started on that topic. Okay. Uh, another question by Cheeseburg. Sorry, I'm uh, coming to this Q and A late, so this might have been answered. But how much does Mir take from Wayland, and is it possible for the project to share some code? Um, so, I think we should clarify here first: Wayland and Weston. So, um, first of all, Weston would have to share code with Mir because Weston is the implementation, while Wayland is the is the um, protocol spec. Um, so, in theory, um, Mir and Weston could share code, of course. Um, and it's highly likely that we will use uh, things like libxkb common for, for key map handling and stuff like that. Um, so, in that sense, we are obviously reusing a lot of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And second is um, we are leveraging a lot of work that has been done for Weston in Mesa, for example, for, for defining our, our client side EGL platform. Um, we are leveraging a lot of work there already. Um, however, um, kind of we, we have two tra tra trajectories here, and right now um, we are just evolving in in our own directions. And let's see what the future brings. Okay. Here's a question about um, new eye candy and what the benefits are going to be. I think we sufficiently answered that one. Another one about, oh, then this one is a bit different. Uh, so the non Qt 5 apps will run on XMIR. Non Qt 5 apps will run on XMIR. Well, um, XMIR basically means um, there's an X server in between, which mm -hmm. will the legacy support mod mode anyway. So as long as the apps talk a toolkit that in turn is able to talk X, they should. They they don't even know that um, Mir is existing. Okay, that's straightforward enough. Um, Janine asked, "Will apps running in Xmo be accelerated? How much access will they have to the underlying architecture?" Um, yes, they will be accelerated, and they will still think that they talk to X. Okay. Yeah. And so I guess, you know, the, the follow up to that second question is how much will be exposed is they shouldn't really care. Yeah. So oh, we won't expose anything. So this is kind of, there's the mere 
client-side API. That's what we give to developers. Um, we have a protocol spec um, written or basically described in, in Google Protobuf, which is our data definition and interface definition language. Um, but that's it. OK. This is an interesting question by Enchil. What excites you most about Mail? Its name. <laughs> 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 well, Kevin, go ahead. Well, I guess, you know, I guess Thomas sort of alluded earlier to, you know, there's, there's been a lot of questions about wobbly windows and that sort of thing. But I think there's been so many problems historically with such a pluggable architecture that, I mean, I'm kind of anxious to see how well we can execute and deliver what's actually needed for product using something a little bit more fixed. And I think it'll actually, it, I, th I really do think it will make everyone's life easier in the end. Um, I think there's been a lot of time wasted on figuring out, you know, which plugin is blacklisted or not, and, you know, is it the server, is it the plugin that's broken, and that sort of thing. Um, I think from a, you know, at least from a development standpoint and product delivery standpoint, I think um, that's a real benefit of Mirror and that, that, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, what we're looking for is people using Ubuntu, right? And that will help us do that. Yeah. I think I do agree. So this 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 bigger vision of of Ubuntu, um, kind of powering uh, a whole zoo of form factors and, and transitioning seamlessly across form factors, that's that's really exciting. Um, on a technical or from a very technical perspective, and that's only me, I guess. Um, I'm I'm really proud to work on on two projects now um, that are or that have been engineered in such a rigorous way. So kind of the, the focus on, on tests is as important as, or the focus on quality in general is as important as the focus on features. So um, it's obviously a delicate balance that needs to be, that needs to be in place there. But I, I really love the, the way that the overall system is engineered. Great. Um, let me see. We have more questions than, we, than we're going to have time, so um, I think what I recommend is that everybody uh, who has more questions, and here's a, a couple of really interesting ones, make sure you join the Ubuntu-Mail channel on Freenode or uh, ask on the Mail Devil uh, mailing list. Thanks a lot for your brilliant questions. That was, it was great. and. Uh, Thanks a lot to, to you two, you, your hard work and, and being here and answering all the questions that was, was great. And uh, by the looks of it, we should probably do a follow-up session at some stage uh, sure. to, so, sure. so you can, can sh show what's, what has happened in the meantime. Oh, thanks for having us, first of all. Uh, absolutely. So have a great day, everyone, and yep. uh, see you next time. Thanks, see Daniel. you next time. Bye, Bye. Daniel. Bye. Bye, people. <laughs> <laughs>